Are you interested in solar filters but you don't know where to start? Let me clear up the mystery behind solar filters in this video. Hi, I'm Taku Kamabi, a freelance photographer and Nikon Canada ambassador here in Ontario, Canada. Thanks for joining me on my channel where I aim to inspire, motivate and educate on anything you can do with your camera. Now, I talked about photographing the sun in, in this video here and I offer some helpful tips and tricks for photographing the sun with or without a solar filter. So be sure to check that out. And as always, I'm not responsible for any damages to your lens, camera or yourself when you're photographing the sun. Use your best judgment and if you're not comfortable, then don't do it at all. Solar filters are essentially a thin film that you place in front of your lens. It allows you to expose properly for the sun so you don't blow out your highlights or you have no ugly blotches in your image when you're photographing the sun. You can take beautiful pictures of solar eclipses without harming your eyes or your equipment. Solar filters also filter out harmful UV and infrared light. So you can rest assured that your lens won't heat up quickly. Solar filters are rated at an optical density of 5.0. Now don't confuse that with the neutral density of fiber because the two are completely different and I'll get to that in a little moment. Can you look at the sun directly with a solar filter? Always note the manufacturer's warnings on these filters. This one I have from Vader Planetarium says I should not use this filter to view the sun with the naked eye and a long range lens. They recommend buying solar glasses specifically to view the sun. If you haven't bought your solar glasses to view the solar eclipse of April 8, 2024, you should do that now before they sell out closer to the date. Let me interrupt this message to show you exactly where I got my solar eclipse viewing glasses. When I was doing research to find local retailers uh, who sold solar eclipse viewing glasses, I came across this project by local high school students. These students realized the relationship between monarch butterflies and the solar eclipse and actually created this monarch butterfly eclipse project. For those of you who have been following me for a while, know that recently I made a YouTube video on how to photograph monarch butterflies while they were migrating throughout the city. So this project came as a complete and welcome surprise for me. You can get your solar eclipse viewing glasses at www.monarchbutterflyeclipse.com and 100% of the net profits will go towards the Monarch Butterfly Eclipse Foundation which supports the conservation of monarch butterfly and its habitat. So if you think about it, it's really a win-win situation especially when a pan pack of this only costs $29.95 Canadian plus free shipping. And as a bonus, I actually think these are the best looking glasses on the market right now. There are many ways of attaching a solar filter to your lens. You can buy ready-made filters that are designed to attach to various barrel sizes like this. These attach by screwing in to tighten the filter against the front of your lens. This is pretty quick and easy, but it also costs a lot. I believe this one with the filter size of about 7 to 8 centimeters was about 70 Canadian dollars. These filters are also sold in sheets. These are the most economical ways of getting a filter since they're not made for any specific lenses. I got this A4 size solar sheet for about 35 Canadian dollars and it's more than four times the size of this solar filter that costs double the amount. They even give you instructions on how to make a filter holder for your lens on the back of this sheet. Once you get the sheet, you have to somehow make the attachment so it fits the lens you want to use it on. Check out my do-it-yourself attachment I made for my Nikkor 800mm f6.3 it's a beast of an attachment, but it works like a charm. But Taku, you may ask, that 800 millimeter lens has a drop-in filter attachment. You could have made a much smaller filter to put in there. Well, I did actually, and it also works. 
but you have to be careful with this. The drop-in filter holder is actually placed behind the aperture blades. That means while the sunlight is filtered through before reaching the sensor, it's not filtered before hitting the aperture. There have been cases where people had pointed their lenses towards the sun for an extended period of time during an eclipse and their aperture blades melted. You don't want that to happen on this lens. So now that you know all about solar filters, you're probably asking yourself, why can't you do the same thing with neutral density filters? A typical ND filter of three, six, or 10 stops isn't strong enough to properly expose for the sun. So why not stack multiple ND filters together to get the desired look? Well, you'll need approximately 16.6 .6 stops to properly expose for the sun and even still, typical ND filters won't filter out the harmful UV and infrared lights. Not to mention, the more ND filters you stack on top of each other, the greater the chances your image quality will degradate. Recently, however, there have been many manufacturers who have made ND filters specific for solar photography. Nissi, for example, came out with their 16.6 .6 stop ND filter that also blocks out harmful rays. How much does it block out though? I don't know as they don't really specify. They also mention not to use a filter to look directly at the sun and use it solely for photography purposes. The price? 99 US dollars for a 77 millimeter threaded filter. That's pretty expensive. There is an advantage to this though. Using a solar filter made with sheets are very fragile. If there is a hole in the filter or something is scratched off the surface, then the filter should be thrown away and not be used. The Nissi filter is also nice and compact so it fits neatly in your camera bag. So it's really up to you to decide if the costs are worth it. I don't have it and I'm quite happy with my do-it-yourself filters so I'll stick with these for now. A word about the nomenclature of ND filters. While solar filters are measured and indicated in optical densities which is the amount of light that is attenuated or absorbed by the solar filter, neutral density filters on the other hand may be indicated in several different ways including their neutral density factor such as 2 times, 32 times, 64 times, or ND2, 32, or ND64, or even their ND numbers such as ND2.0, ND3.0, or ND5.0. So for example, an optical density or OD of 2.0 may be the same as an ND2.0, but it's not the same as ND2. An optical density of 2.0 is roughly equivalent to an ND100, which means the amount of light coming through is reduced to 1 100th of the amount of light, or it's reduced by approximately 6.6 .6 stops. So that's pretty much it when it comes to solar filters. If you have any questions on solar filters or solar photography, write them down in the comments so other people can read them as well. I hope you now have a better understanding about solar filters and solar photography, and that you're now better equipped for the next solar eclipse wherever you may be in the world. Thanks for watching my video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.